It's less than uh, 15 minutes to 8 o'clock in the morning in East Coast in the United States. And the market uh, looking a little bit mixed early today because a very heavy day in terms of economic data we've received. The U.S. GDP numbers showing 2.3% in the first quarter of 2018. Analysts pooled by MarketWatch was looking at 2%. That figure uh, lower than the fourth quarter of 2017. But the uh, market says it's not really a bad one uh, by, as we speak. But earnings is providing more fillip to the Wall Street market as we look, as we see the Nasdaq now better by 0.4%. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average Futures and the S&P Futures also erasing some of the earlier losses. S&P Futures about two hours ago was about 0.2% in the red. Now that's less than one-tenth of a percent as we speak. Chevron, one of the world's largest oil companies reported better than expected numbers and the share price on the move. Now, one of the biggest stories for Africa and for everyone this week was the Malaria, Malaria Day Corporate Alliance on Malaria in Africa has found that 50% of the world population risk malaria fever if immediate action is not taken to address the threat. This finding was explained during a forum held in Lagos during the week, uh, during the observance of the week-long World Malaria Day. Explaining the need for private sector funding for the elimination of the fever which the president of the GBC Health, Ms. Nancy Wilfairfield, tells domestic private sector players how to accelerate their interest in kicking malaria out of Africa. Funding for malaria is only at 41% of the 2020 target of 6.5 billion. And as, you will, as you've heard and we will continue to reinforce through today's session, Almost half of the world's population is at risk of contracting malaria, and the disease remains a major public health challenge, especially here in Africa, which bears 90% of the global share of malaria cases and 91% of malaria deaths. We want to change that. Nigeria accounts for the highest number of cases and deaths from malaria in sub-Saharan Africa, and the economy itself loses approximately $1.1 billion each year due to malaria-related absenteeism in the workplace and treatment costs. Yet while challenges persist, significant progress is being made. Since 2010, there's been a 35% decline in the number of children under five testing positive for malaria. 69% of families own at least one insecticide-treated net, bed net. And more than one-third of pregnant women took the recommended preventive therapy. Investment is vital. There's a strong rationale for the private sector to play a role in shaping health markets in Africa, and in particular in malaria, with its direct impact on the, on the workforce and communities. Good health truly does mean good business, and investing in health is both a business and a social imperative. Companies continue to lead in supporting regional and national health goals through workplace health and wellness programs for employees, dependents, and communities, direct service delivery, improvements to data management, supply chain monitoring, training of health workers uh, and or other su supportive inputs, and influencing policy that helps to improve systems and increase domestic financing. On the supply side, there's a strong appetite from both the global and African business sector, philanthropists, donors, and development partners for investing in innovative and scalable health systems and solutions. All of you are in the room today because you believe in and understand the importance of working together to fight what can often be a fatal disease. Yet outside the room, Africa is undergoing a massive demographic change. 70% of the continent's projected 1.6 billion inhabitants will be, working, will be of working age by 2030. The youth bulge will no doubt change the economic landscape of the continent. Harnessing this potential into positive force for development through investments in health, empowerment, education, and employment is one of the greatest challenges in the next 15 years. By 2063, Africa can be a prosperous, will be a prosperous continent. The Global Fund provides more than 50% of the international funding towards malaria. During the period of 2002 to 2016, it dispersed in excess of $9.1 billion in malaria control programs in more than 100 countries, 
using a comprehensive approach with international funders such as PMI and other bilateral donors, which combines education, prevention, diagnosis, diagnosis, diagnosis and treatment. Gradually, international funding is also leveraging increased domestic funding for malaria. The Global Fund is progressively using co-financing mechanisms to ensure that donor contributions to fight malaria are matched by countries' own contributions. Co-financing commitments linked to 355 million US dollars of donor investments through the Global Fund have helped catalyze $2 billion of domestic investments in 46 countries affected by malaria for the period of 2018 to 2020. However, the last World Malaria Report published by the World Health Organization provided some sobering news. For the first time in many years, the number of malaria cases worldwide went up, not down. In 2016, there were an estimated 216 million cases of malaria, an increase of approximately 5 million cases over 2015. We still have to better understand the underlying reasons, but it seems that it has been a combination of several factors. Challenging political environments in some of the most affected countries, increasing drug and insecticide resistance, and possibly the beginning of the effect of climate change on transmission patterns. Another major factor is the lack of financial resources. While the funding has gone up significantly, there is still a major gap and the world would need to spend almost double the amount from what it is spending today. Three, these resources will have to come predominantly from domestic health budgets but they need to be complemented by international solidarity instruments and the private sector. Only together will we be able to drive down the number of malaria infections, reduce mortal mortality further, and finally end malaria, as stated in the Sustainable Development Goals. The Gates Foundation has already generously agreed to support the Match Fund with a 50 million pound contribution and the Global Fund will fundraise for the remainder. The funding gap for Africa's malaria uh, has the figure of 7 billion US dollars what is needed. Let's finish off this edition of Business Incorporated in South Africa, where the citizens are bracing up for another increase in the retail prices of petrol, which is expected to go up by 3.4% from May the 2nd. The price of wholesale diesel will also go up by 4.6%. The Central Energy Fund explains that the depreciation of the rand, that's the South African currency, against the US dollar in the month of March, as well as the higher oil prices globally, topping $75 a barrel, had contributed to the uptick in local fuel prices. Let's be there for today, everyone. Do have a great weekend. And this is your business, Incorporated. I am Paul Sinomofaye.